What is going on, Collecto? Um, welcome back to my channel. It's your boy, Adam Ron. Um, like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, today, you know what? Today, I didn't get no messages, right? Today, I just wanted to um, give my new cards a little run. What a, yeah. Give my new cards a new run. I uh, bought a pair of new cards. I mean, bought some new cards today. So basically, I want to try them out. I want to see how it turned out, right? So, uh, this is a spirit box. This is your blessing, right? This is a three. Reveal to me what's going on. Okay, so this is going to be a lighter side of reading because of the deck that I'm using. It's going to be a lot of uh, lighter energy here. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to offset it a little bit with the new deck that I have. Because originally it was designed to tr for trolling. Because I have a, a deck for trolls now. Right? However, I figure it will be a little bit smarter to use this to figure out what's going on in the world with uh, current events and stuff like that and what's to come, right? So far, uh, I think I did pretty good, especially with the prediction of, um, you know, um, the stock market for the most part. Uh, I did do a reading when I was, you know, I was trying to encourage you guys to uh, get involved with like cryptocurrencies and uh, stocks and stuff like that. And that hit that happened right before the war. That happened right before the Ukrainian war. And what ended up happening was um, in order to fund U the Ukrainian war or help Ukraine with their, you know, monetarily wise, people were flocking to Bitcoin, you know, and, it, you know, so um, for those of you that did miss out, I'm sorry. But um, yeah. And you know what? Um, there's, there's, and I also predicted that there was another major legislation that was getting ready to be passed that some, most people weren't going to be happy about, but it's kind of like the government's way of pacifying everybody because of the news that was coming out. And, uh, what ended up happening was, um, unfortunate. Well, actually it was two things that happened. Uh, one thing that affected the mass the most was the fact that um uh, surprisingly it wasn't marijuana i thought it was going to be the marijuana bill thought they were going to pass that and then everybody was just going to go nuts right which they may end up doing the vibe that i get is that they might do that just to keep civil unrest from happening from this uh abortion bill that they just passed which or they were getting ready to pass okay um also when originally i did the reading um, I figured that it was more aimed towards like student loan debt. It was between, I honestly, I thought it was weed. You know, I, I just had that vibe that they were going to legalize weed. Uh, it did make it past the, uh, state of representatives, but it's working its way up to, um, what is that? Uh, Senate. So I don't know if it got killed in Senate or not yet or what's going on. They're probably waiting to after. Uh, some of the voting goes goes down, you know. So if you aren't a voter, now is the time to be a voter of all times because a lot of people think that the power is on a federal level. Like a lot of people think that the president has the most power, but in reality, he don't. It's the governors who have the most power in the United States in terms of well, the senators and the governors. Basically, all the power is on the state level. Okay. The federal, you know, like the uh, president generally is just like, basically he's, you know, he's just like, uh, you know, he, he governed, uh, I want to say international affairs, basically. He's like a representative of international affairs, you know. Usually he doesn't get involved too much with domestic issues or problems unless it is uh, strenuous that he'll voice his opinion and try to convince Congress to vote otherwise, but all the power is on the level of Congress, at least inside the United States, right? That's something that they teach you in school, but they just, but they don't put too much emphasis on it. And a lot of people think president, 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 like the president can do anything, but in reality, he cannot do just anything. He's only a, representa a represent representative on an international level, okay? And, um, 
and he got and also you know well you know his powers are a little bit different or whatever but either way uh like i was saying like the all the power is on the state level it is not on the um federal level unfortunately well, fortunately because you know i know there was quite a few presidents i wasn't too happy with and i know you know there's presidents you wasn't happy with so and a lot of people say oh that president runs the country no the president does not run the country the person who runs the country is your congressman or congresswoman on a state level. So all of that mess about um, the government, the uh, president passed this or passed that. Th just because he doesn't sign his name on it doesn't mean that it cannot get put into law. So, you know, and that's just for, you know, my people who don't know, you know. Anyway, y'all know the deal. We're about to do our NATO um our NATO chart read, right? Let's see what's going on in the current events. What is going on with uh, the cosmos and, and what is this? Um, we connected <clears throat> tarot with uh, astrology. So let's see if we, what happens when we connect to see what's coming next or what's going on. In the cosmos because um i don't have my book right now uh generally i would have my book and the only thing that i know is that um the sun is in Taurus. i believe uh venus is in Taurus again still i believe um the moon is in like gemini you know it's it's a variety of different stuff that's going on here right Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Then we got our twelve, right? Okay, so like I said, I'm still perfecting my uh my spread and my pull. Matter of fact, I, I'm thinking I might perfect it tonight and find a final key that I'm missing here in terms of uh, how it's connected to the universe because there's other influences that is connected to the natal chart. Like you have Ceres, you have, um, well, you have Ceres, you have Chiron, you have the North Node, you have the Mid Haven. Um, you have a lot of other influences that connects to this, but essentially these are the core 12 houses, right? That's what this is, the core 12 houses all governed by certain energies and um certain planets right everything is energy frequency and vibration okay energy is going to be the motivation from the planet itself or the uh, body which could be a planet the frequency is the effect that the constellation would have i believe or I want to say the house. Wait a minute, no. No, no, no. It's, okay, the planet is going to be the uh, motivation, the energy, right? The frequency is going to be where it's placed because that's how it affect our lives. And then three is the freak, uh, the vibration. The vibration is how it's echoing through the space-time continuum based on how um, it's placed in our lives, okay? So we got the energy, which is the energy itself, the planet. Then we have the frequency, which is where it is, um, like the uh, constellation that is placed or the embodiment of the energy, what, what form the energy is taking form of. And then the vibration, which is how it echoes in our life which is um, the houses here. Okay, so <clears throat> in the first house here, we have the chariot, okay? The chariot is generally representative of cancer. Cancer in the first house is a represent like, yeah, cancer is governed by the moon. So let's say the moon energy in the first house has to do about your subconscious self and co the connection between yourself and your subconscious self, okay? Has to do with uh, mastering of emotions, coming into terms with emotions and being to, able to express your emotions. 
um, <clears throat> to feel your emotions and express it accordingly here, right? So this could be a very emotional time or this could be an emotionally chill time. But emotionally, there may be something in your life that is convincing you to move forward in life or to let go of the old baggages. And this is a part of your learning journey, especially in terms of uh, the uh, emotional intelligence. I would say that cancer, because it is governed by the moon, is probably one of the... Uh, yeah, I would say that cancer is the... Um, ruler of emotional intelligence okay the reason i say that is because with piscean energy it's more of a of a dreamer energy with uh, scorpio energy it's more of an intense uh energy okay it has more of an intensity to it but cancer although it is a masculine dominatory energy it embodies itself in our lives as like um us feeling something and Understanding the fact that we're feeling the full effect of something, okay? It's not ignoring your emotions. It's acknowledging the fact that you are feeling or experiencing an emotion or an energy that is being sent towards you, directed towards you, that you're creating yourself, that you are indulging in, that you are embodying or even engulfed by, right? And it like... Um, Instead of you running because it's overwhelming or hiding because it's overwhelming or whatever it may be, or you create a delusional state of mind or whatever, you don't, okay? You listen to, you're listening to your emotions, okay? Basically, it's what this is with that chariot card out here. This is the vibe of listening to your inner emotions, your inner intuition, your intuition is speaking. Whether your intuition is speaking from a hurt place or a healed place is up to you. Your intuition can speak from either place. But by this being in the first house with uh, that Aryan first house, <clears throat> this generally, like, um, I'm still learning the uh, placements and breaking it down and connecting certain stuff. But the way I see it is kind of like with the moon and a Mars energy. This gives me the vibe of, um, like I said, like taking the initiative or acting on your intuition, okay? Cancer is also um, a sign of like, um, cancer, it, 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 cancer, a lot of people think of cancer as being a sensitive sign, but in reality, it is marked by the scarab, okay? The scarab is like the king of all beetles. It's like, the, it's like, it takes a special person to understand their emotions, experience their emotions, and master their emotions, okay? It takes a special kind of person like that. We tend to lean towards people like that. So, as this correlates to the Mars energy or the first house, where Mars is, or Aries is usually the ruler, or Mars is usually the ruler, this may be a time to listen to your intuition and act on your intuition here, okay? A lot of people, a lot of stuff is not is going to sound weird or it's going to feel wrong. Then go with that, okay? You can, it's, there's nothing wrong with being wrong, okay? A lot of people think like, oh, you know, there's nothing wrong with being wrong when you are trying to learn what is right. If you don't give yourself permission to learn what is wrong, you'll never know what's right sometimes, okay? That's an old Chinese proverb, okay? Um, and yeah, I'm going to use like my trolling deck. Even though this is, this is designed specifically to voice my opinion about trolls and stuff like that, right? <laughs> when you see this deck, you're going to be like, what the F? You know what I'm saying? Because it is, it is really, 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 really. To me, I thought it was funny. I'm not taking these cards serious. I just took whatever I saw and I just said, hey, make me some cards with this, 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 and that on there. I'll make it work however it needs to work. You know what I mean? And this is the outcome of that. Um, that's going to be my first house. Second third, fourth, and I'm going to go all the way around, right? And yes, that is the Akatsuki sign, all right? For those of you who are anime fans, it's associated or affiliated with Akatsuki. 
Okay. This is my rebel day. <laughs> this is definitely a rebel day. So in correspondence to, uh, and these are all randomized stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these randomized uh, cards and I'm gonna correlate it to the same message that I just gave, right? I'm gonna correlate it to the best that I can. It may not be a full guarantee that I'll be able to do it, but I'm gonna take a shot at it. You let me know if it resonates or not. If you find these cards funny, good. <laughs> Cause this is honestly designed as like a punchline or a joke or to bring some love and light back into um, the tarot cards that I read or whatever. Cause it was just way too serious at some at one point. It was just too serious. Hey, so I'm not gonna take it so serious now. So remember I was telling you about going with your intuition and stuff like that. What I have here is, uh, there we go. See, look at that non-aggressive area. Look at that. You like that? I know you guys like that. That's, that is, man, I like that. <clears throat> so basically it's, it's telling you like, you know, like I said, with the emotional intelligence, with this uh, non-aggressive area card. And yes, this is a Yu-Gi-Oh card. These are all memes. That's what I forgot to tell you. They are all based off of memes, okay? So with this non-aggressive uh, trap card, Yu-Gi-Oh trap card or whatever, right? <laughs> Basically, it's telling you that this is a non-aggressive time in you know, history or whatever, or non-aggressive time in your, um, in your journey, okay? It's not about being aggressive. It's not about over and done. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we get that you follow your intuitive, your intuition or emotional intelligence and it's telling you to be more aggressive about something or whatever but that's not the case this is just telling you that that aggression that you have use that to move forward because there are nine times out of ten there could be people out here who's trying to be aggressive with you but it only works if you're aggressive with them okay and the second house has to do with possessions and things of that nature we have the ten of wands out here right so there could be some uh, issues here, especially with uh, possessions. Uh, when it comes to possessions and stuff like that, or the second house, generally the Ten of Wands here, this has to do with um, acquiring possessions, holding on to possessions, um, bills and stuff like that. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, this could be a difficult time for someone. Uh, somebody could be having a difficult time right now. Um, the way I see it is that there, this has to do with uh, difficulty. Um, I'm not gonna say rising to the occasion, but I'm gonna say like difficulty in um, basically, um, you know, taking care of like like possessions or acquiring possessions and stuff like that. This has nothing to do with responsibility, okay? Because possessions and responsibility are two different things. A possession would be like a car, a house, you know, the things that you want in life, right? Right now, there's some difficulty here. There's some conflict that's going on here. There's some things that you're trying to weigh out. Things are a little heavy on you because you're probably trying to figure out or trying to um, pick and choose between something you want and something that you need. And if you're something like me, sometimes you confuse what you want with, you, with what you need. You know what I'm saying? It happens like that sometimes, okay? But um, let's see the meme card affiliated with this. You have um, FBI agent. <laughs> when activated, catch all um, LOL icons in comment section. Okay, so yeah, basically uh, somebody could be in trouble here. Or somebody uh, could be trying to avoid some kind of trauma or some kind of trouble or something like that. Uh, basically, with this ten of ten of wands out here, it could be some difficulty um, getting legal representation. Is the vibe that I'm getting here? Um, you could, uh, yeah, there's definitely the police or something out here with FBI agent out here. Somebody could have a federal case out here. Um, also, with this ten of wands energy, um, yeah, it could be a very difficult uh, or a very challenging uh, case in a sense. Uh, for some, <clears throat> for some, it's like, um, wow. For some, it's like, uh, 
you know, um, maybe it's a challenging decision with a court case. It could be a decision that needs to be made or uh, some kind of action that needs to be taken on a court case, especially a federal case or something like that. And um, yeah, or something very difficult, basically the vibe that I'm getting here. But as it correlates to uh, the NATO chart or whatever, you got the 10 of wands out here. There's definitely some difficulty in acquiring some kind of um, possession. There's some kind of possession that you might have your eye on that it's, you know, actually difficult. And it could be affiliated with uh, some kind of federal land or it could be something where um, it is like the rules and regulations are against it and you got to bend it or whatever it may be. It might require you to go to work, go to court for it, whatever it may be, right? All right. So next, in the third um, third house, we have the Two of Earth right here, the Two of Pentacles right here in reverse, right? So basically with the Two of Pentacles in reverse here, there's a lot of miscommunication because the third house has to do with communication and it's affiliated with Gemini, right? With that uh, Two of Coins or whatever. And remember I told you with my card deck, when it comes to Pentacles, I generally affiliate or associated with uh, knowledge and wisdom. Okay, because I guess maybe because I just value knowledge and wisdom the most. But knowledge and wisdom is something that is tangible that, you know, it's 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 like depending on what degree or the level of your wisdom or knowledge, you know what I'm saying, on if it becomes tangible or not. You know what I'm saying? But at this phase in life, since it's a pinnacle, it's like tangible wisdom and evidence. I mean, wisdom, right? So with this two of pinnacles here, the vibe that I get here is that there's some juggling or there's some imbalance here going on. There's a miscommunication basically because this is in a Gemini slot. By this being in a Gemini slot, there's uh, a miscommunication like between well, understanding and being understood, okay? The, well, and the reason why I say that is because in the communication slot and Gemini is governed by what? Mercury, right? Mercury operates on two octaves. The throat chakra is cut into, is basically built off of two octaves, okay? Understanding and being understood, okay? And either way, it's all about communication here. So whatever is going on, there's two, there's conflicting views here that's throwing off some maybe a connection or it could be throwing off some kind of, um, I wanna say like with this two of pentacles, it's like there's two people with two different conflicting ideas, right? But one must supersede the other for whatever reason. And it could be involved with this court case here. You see what I'm saying? But there's some kind of misinterpretation of information. That, you know, it, it, I didn't, okay, yeah. Maybe some information is misinterpreted here or maybe something is misunderstood. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see what the cards say. The car says, come on now. <laughs> so I'm definitely getting the energy of somebody who don't understand something. It's like you're trying to explain something to somebody and they just don't understand. You know what I mean? My, I don't want you. You know, and they're just like, oh, you a little bit want me. You know, and it's just like, oh, fuck. What a dipshit, you know? Okay. So next uh, in the fourth slot, which is the uh, mother slot has to do with um, motherly energy and stuff like that in the home life here. We have the Six of Swords here. It looks like somebody's getting ready to leave a uh, home life situation. Somebody wants to get away. Somebody wants to separate themselves from it. And it could be very well from this uh, misinterpretation or, you know, not being, feeling like you're not understood here. And also it could be a lot of weight, you know, there could be a lot of burdens and stuff at the house now that I think about it. Because, you know, and this may not just be bills or something like that, because that's what the uh, the fifth, no, the sixth um, house is for, okay? This could also mean, this could be, you know, just general, like, maybe, well, maybe it is bills. Well, I'll leave it like that. I'll just leave it open and we'll figure it out later, whatever it is. There's some burden involving like acquiring some kind of um, property or some something, okay? 
And then, you know, also affiliated with that, this person could be frustrated or living in an aggressive household. And guess what? They are trying to find their non-aggressive area. And the only way to do that is to get away. Okay. So with the Six of Swords out here, this is definitely a motherly energy. Generally with the Six of Swords here being paired with the mother energy in the uh, fourth house, this is the house of uh, cancer here. Okay. This is the house of cancer. So basically somebody emotionally, somebody feels like they are the outcast of the family. They feel like that they don't fit in here. Okay. Or they might feel like, you know, there's something more elsewhere. Okay. And yeah, of course. I don't know if y'all remember that, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so look this card says uh you activate when somebody says something so dumb you can't reply <laughs> so apparently there's some there's some uh problems in the household maybe somebody is tired of re responding to certain people and they're like you know what it's better just not to reply because i did talk about the miscommunication aspect right yeah so somebody's just ready to move on, like, you know. Somebody is tired of arguing with somebody who is just like, you know, they, they just feel like they're done, basically. Okay. All right, just one second. Ooh, had to get a drink. Okay. Um, okay, so let's go to the next house, the fifth house. This house has to do with like a uh, solar energy, basically creativity. Uh, the other one is like, sub. this is like subconscious, this fourth house or yeah, fourth house has to do subconscious energy, right? Somebody probably feel trapped and they feel trapped or attached to somebody who's dumb. You know what I'm saying? But they're trying to ignore them possibly. Uh, right here, we have the Six of Wands out here in reverse here. So with this uh, this being in the father slot, this has to do with like creativity and stuff like that. Somebody isn't getting the recognition. Somebody feel like they're not getting the recognition that they deserve for something here, okay? Look like somebody wants some kind of recognition. They, uh, You know what I'm saying? For some kind of creative endeavor or somebody um, creative endeavor cause them to get a negative response. Something that someone did creatively is causing people to look at them weird, oddly, or whatever it may be, okay? Oop. And uh, let's see what card we got here. Okay, so we got a kid. I don't know if you know about this anime here, but it's called Soul Eater Kid, right? This right here is a representation of soul reconnaissance. There are three people in this picture, right? Each gun has a soul, okay? If you ever watched it, it's two women and a male, okay? So this could be about a third party between uh, three women, I mean, three people in general, right? There's one person who's actually pulling the trigger and everyone else is in this picture is actually just being a, an accomplice, basically, right? You got one soul that is older than the other. One is more wiser than the other. But then the person behind the whole scene pulling the trigger has the intelligence or the wisdom or the person who is the mastermind behind the entire thing, okay? These three people are going through this Six of Wands energy here where they've done something. They've uh, done like some kind of soul reconnaissance. Uh, they could have, uh, yeah, they could have done soul reconnaissance and you know what's weird? Because now that I think about it, I did see that in one of my, um, when I took a bath, a, a spiritual bath, it was like a male and a female that was lifted up off the ground and their stomachs were almost touching, but out of their mouth, there was like some kind of spirit or something like that coming out of their mouth or whatever it may be. Um, this gives me that vibe that all three of these people probably did a soul reconnaissance. And basically what soul reconnaissance is, it is uh, when some people, um, it's tantric sex between three people, basically. It's three people that had tantric sex together. And what it does is it permanently tied them together through the orgasm that all three of them shared.
when all three of them share this orgasm, it's what's tying them together, whether they know it or not, okay? With that being said, uh, somebody could have used that tantric energy or that tantric, uh, yeah, basically that tantric energy to uh, manifest something, okay? Which is very dangerous because, like I said, with soul reconnaissance here, your souls all have to be on the same wavelength it has to have the same uh, mind state. It has to have the same energy output. It has to have the same motivations all at one time, right? Very difficult to do with three people, right? Somebody tried or attempted that, and that's what is that right there resulted in uh, the Six of Wands energy here, which is uh, them creating something that they wasn't supposed to create, you know, an abomination, or possibly um, they used it for the wrong reasons. This soul resonance is very, very dangerous because the thing is, is that when God created Adam and Eve, you know, it was like it basically it was a single soul that he split in half in order to fit in two different people. Right now, that's the reason why he was saying, like, you know, when you have sex, you know, I mean, not to have sex out of wedlock, because essentially what happens is that that orgasm or uh, basically powerful like orgasms and stuff like that. Well, it has the it has the energy to bind you to that person, okay? Which is why we have a lot of people out here who are based, they don't, they, 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 they say that line like, I know that person ain't good for me, but I just can't leave them alone. It's because you had some form of tantric sex with them, right? And that orgasm that you guys had, or maybe they had an orgasm, you know what I'm saying? And that's the reason, that's the, the link that's tying you two together. Almost like a covalent bond in chemistry, okay? Essentially, actually, that's exactly what it is. It's a covalent bond in chemistry, okay? Anyway, we got this, uh, that's the sixth house here. So yeah, somebody did some really dark shit. Or, um, actually, there's no words to it. Could possibly even be the father figure. And this mother figure is trying to walk away because she feel like the father is an idiot. You know? All right. So, next we have the house of one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth house has to do with, uh, I believe, Virgo. Is this Virgo? No. Uh, responsibilities and stuff like that. That definitely sounds like, uh... Wait a minute. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo. This is the house of uh, Virgo. Yeah, Virgo. So this is the house of uh, responsibilities and stuff like that, health and all that good stuff here, okay? You have the emperor energy here. So yeah, like you could have uh, started a new diet. You could be... Uh, Taking care of your responsibilities. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing at this point. You know what I'm saying? In terms of uh, your health and stuff like that. Uh, your responsibilities, you know, true enough is not like, oh, yeah, everything's taken. Everything may not be 100% taken care of, but you have some kind of uh, power over it, basically, is what I'm seeing here with Archangel Michael out here. Um, your health and stuff like that is protected. There's some protective energies over the dieting and the health that you have going on right now. Um, the emperor or uh, there's some kind of control or power that's over it, right? There's higher power over it that's governing it. And uh, by you being the emperor or you coming off with this emperor energy and your responsibilities, that means that you're on top of the thing. You're on top of things right now, right? Either you or yeah, whoever this resonates for, right? So let's see what the meme card says for this. This says, I'm Tyrone. I fuck what this reader says. I'm here to fuck your wife. Long D style. <laughs> oh my God. Yo, I love this dick already, man. So, <laughs> whoever this is, they feel like they are, uh, they got the power. I mean, whoever this is, right? The vibe that I get is that you are dominating your um, responsibilities, okay? And you're doing it with this kind of energy, with this uh, big D kind of energy, right? 
which means that you're taking authority, you're not backing down from things, you know when things are need to be taken care of, you're on top of it, you're taking care of it, you're handling it. It's, it's uh, basically you being uh, in control of what is um, around you or um, what is uh, connected to you, okay? You have dominion and authority over what is around you and connected to you through your responsibilities, right? Okay, so let's look into partnerships, right? Oh, wait, that is Mars energy, matter of fact. So you got that Mars energy in, um, let's see what that is, Mars in the fifth house, well, sixth house? Mars in Virgo? Yeah, that Mars in Virgo energy definitely um, may pull out like your pride, possibly, is what I'm seeing, you know, with the Tyrone out here. It is giving you that, that oomph that you need to handle your responsibilities. It also is uh, give off the vibe of, um, you know, not just being like dominant or domineering or anything like that, but just uh, you are more confident about who you are as a person. Okay. It's all about self-esteem and confidence as well, because Virgo has a tendency to receive inside of themselves. Okay, here we go with this Libra energy out here. We got uh, four, four swords out here in reverse here. So in terms of like partnerships and stuff like that right now, it looks like, um, hmm. it looks like you might have more going on than what you expected, right? Maybe it might, you know, and generally with the four swords and uh, four swords and upright, it's about, you know, that part of your aspect of your life being sleeping or whatever. But the vibe that I'm getting is that your partnership sector is restless right now. So maybe you're longing for someone or you are looking to be with someone or a lot of people are looking on at you, okay? You're catching a lot of people's attentions here, attention here with this four uh, sword in reverse here. Now, with this being in partnerships and stuff like that and you working with people and stuff like that, this may be people looking to work with you or work for you or whatever it may be, okay? This is definitely boss energy, especially with you, uh, especially if we pair that with uh, that Virgo energy where you are the boss or you're in control. So not only are you in control of your emotions, you are also taking care of your responsibilities here, right? And that right there is very alluring to, uh, you know, a few partners or whatever, or somebody who wants to partner up with you or somebody who is uh, watching you in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And we also have, um, I forgot this kid name, but this is also Soul Eater here. Basically, what happens is that this guy is has this demon thing here connected to him, okay? So this could be somebody who, like an unwanted attachment here, okay? So you could be tired from an unwanted connection. That's a possibility. That there's an unwanted connection that you are, uh, you know, trying to get rid of or you're trying to master or you're trying to take control over. Even if it's like, um, you know, this is you consciously and then that other spy aspect is your unconscious or subconscious self. Essentially, you have a power and authority over it. However, because you don't it, escape your senses, what's really going on is like, um, you know, What's really going on is that, um, you know, you just, it kind of like runs amok. But essentially what happens, there's this mutual respect there, okay? It's like there's a mutual respect that goes on with this. Because you have, you know, because like I said with the other one, it's all about soul reconnaissance here. It looks like somebody who is uh, like very weak and soft-spoken is being fed on by somebody a little bit more domineering here, okay? And with that being said, it's throwing off. I mean, although they are balanced, they, there's this weird balance here, but this gives a representation of a master-slave relationship or a dominant or submissive relationship. You know what I'm saying? And that's probably what someone is tired of or you could be tired of or someone else could be tired of, okay? This unwanted connection or this dark connection that someone is trying to place upon them, okay? Now, what I can say is that... Um, Although this is a dark, unwanted connection, this person of the light, when they are determined, they have the ability to use this darker aspect 
to their advantage. They are actually the one who is in control, right? The other aspect wants to be in control, but it knows that it doesn't have the power, so it takes it out by trying to bully or um, get over on someone else. It's kind of like, uh, you know, somebody who um, picks on someone because they're smaller than them. You know what I'm saying? At, because they lost the fight, they find the weakest person they can find to fight. And yeah, it's all ego-centered, right? Okay, so now we have to go with uh, other people's money. So what's going on in the sector of other people's money here? We got uh, fire, uh, five of wands in reverse here. So yeah, the vibe that I get with this right here is has to do with... Um, somebody like financially when it comes to other people's money or you know like borrowing money from other people or like uh also this has to do with like sex life i'm still learning a little bit a lot about this eighth house here because it's kind of it's kind of weird kind of confusing sometimes you know what i'm saying but this is the house of scorpio right it has to do with transformation and uh death and transition right so with that being said with this five of sword here i mean five of wands here in reverse it gives me the vibe of let's say no longer like usually when we have like uh transformations and stuff like that or there's a change in something we generally fight it first right and with this five of wands here it kind of gives i, I don't want to say that it's like someone stopping the fight more of someone being not necessarily overwhelmed, but someone being outnumbered, okay? So whatever problems that someone is having in their, like, their sex life possibly or dealing with other people's money, it looks like they're uh, outnumbered in terms of the problems that has arrived. Like something basically vibe that I get is that this problem, this person was first playing with this problem. Then they were walking in this problem. Then they were running in this problem. Then they were waiting in this problem. And then they were uh, swimming in this problem. And now they are drowning in this problem, okay? And it has to do with other people's money, it has to do with uh, outside influences, especially transformation here. Okay, let's see what kind of car we got here, yeah. And this car couldn't sum it up better. This is called the roast circle, where there's a lot of people here and they're just roasting one person and poking out. Or, uh, you know, basically just uh, talking about one person. And that one person that they could be talking about is the person who is responsible for the funds or the money that they all have or share as a whole, or just somebody's money in general, you know, or how someone is struggling in general, okay? Next, we have the ninth house. This is my favorite house, and you know why? Because it is Sagittarius house. This has to do with higher education, uh, philosophies, and uh, long-term travel, and travel, okay? So you have the uh, Queen of Pentacles in reverse here. So yeah, there's definitely no traveling going on right now. The vibe that I'm getting with this is that um, maybe you are like trying to hold on to everything that you have right now. I get the vibe of saving. Generally, when I see the Queen of Pentacles, it has to do with holding on or abusing your power or wisdom in a negative way. And somebody could very well be doing that. Excuse me. Ab abusing some kind of uh, learning philosophies and um, abusing them. Taking those philosophies that they learn and abuse them in order to get over on other people and stuff like that. That is definitely a possibility. However, the vibe that I'm getting here is that I see travel and I see someone saving their money, basically. I see somebody thinking about themselves uh, first and foremost at this time. And when you generally think about yourselves in a realm, when they talk about like, you know, travel and stuff like that and philosophy, this probably has to do with someone trying to discover self-love or how to administer self-love or some kind of vacation that they might need to take or some kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a selfish energy, but it's not bad in a sense. Because the thing is, is that sometimes it's good to be selfish, especially in terms of, um, you know, like uh, taking care of yourself or coming to terms with certain things in life. 
you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you just need to be selfish about it and think about yourself in terms of if this is something that you need to, uh, the philosophy that you need to accept and or reject, okay? And basically what I have here is a Kermit the Frog, my Kermit eating popcorn. So yeah, you could be watching something like maybe you're watching a ship burn down. Maybe you're watching someone go nuts. But the vibe that I'm getting here is that you are definitely um, thinking about yourself. And this is all about self-preservation because the thing is, is that if you know you, if you get involved, you know that it's going to be a lot more trouble or problematic than what you, you know, know. And that's all based off the philosophy and the uh, wisdom that you already have. Okay. So in this circumstance, it looks like you're choosing not to use your wisdom and you know what I'm saying? Basically, it's the vibe I'm getting. You're choosing not to use your wisdom for something. And it's it's a selfish reason, maybe, but it's actually something that is for you. Because, you know, like I said, with this chariot car here, you moving forward in this non-aggressive energy, uh, this non-aggressive car, it's a possibility that this person or somebody wants to uh, trigger you, you know? But you're choosing not to uh, go in that bitter energy or down that bitter realm, right? So let's look at the 10th house of career here. So in terms of career here, it looks like the renewal judgment card in reverse. There's some dark karma or bad karma that's coming with someone's um, finances or with somebody's job possibly. Could be the ending of a job. Um, could be somebody fogging fired, somebody quitting. Um, it could be a variety of different things here, okay? It could be a variety of different things. And the vibe that I definitely get with that is that, you know, it's like, although it seems bad or, you know, because a lot of people think that, you know, that renewal card, judgment, or the tower or whatever it may be, it's a bad card. But this is picking yourself up after a harsh situation. So you could be getting a new job. You could be starting a new job. You could be starting a new career. And it could be scary at first, but it is the best thing to do at this point in time, right? This is for you. It's time to move forward. It's time to rebuild yourself, right? The card that I have here is uh, the race card. <laughs> this is so stupid. Oh my God. And it says that when you play this against um, players that are like other than black, then it's an instant win and all of that. So maybe you feel like they tried to play a race car with you regardless of what uh, race or ethnicity you really are. You may feel like it has to do with your race. You may feel like um, this, that, you know, you were wrongfully terminated because of something like a stereotype or because it, fill in a blank, right? So a variety of reasons we feel like we are wrong or we know that we got wronged out or something, but it's hard to prove it. You know what I'm saying? And maybe that's what it is. You know, you can't solidly prove that it was a race card that was pulled here or like you were, you know, because of your gender or what you believe, because it's all the same. Well, I can't say it's all the same thing because essentially race is something that's outside your control because, you know what I mean? You don't get to pick what race you are, okay? And the thing is, is that this is something outside of your control. So maybe there was some kind of termination or being released from a job for, uh, you know, something outside of your control. Maybe it was something outside of your control, right? Um, the 11th house here, this has to do with your social circle here. Yeah, this has to do with um, the tower. This is the tower card. The other one is the judgment card, but this is the tower card in reverse. So it looks like uh, you could be meet, meeting some new friends. You could be letting some people go. Uh, with the tower card in reverse, it could be uh, trying to avoid the tower in which, you know, you try to find a way to keep everybody together. That's a possibility. You could be trying to keep people together or you could be refusing to let go of certain people who no longer serve you. Um, that is definitely what happened in my case where there was some people that I need to let go of that I refuse to let go for whatever reason or not. You know what I'm saying? And essentially what's happening here with the life ex uh, experience car with the tower in reverse, basically um, the vibe that I get with that, with the uh, social circle is that 
it's time to um, make room for new friends or people who are on the same energetic octave as you. Because some of your friends could have uh, got higher vibrations and they are no longer the person that you knew when you met. And, you know, it happens and it's time for them to go uh, move on in their life or it's time for you to move on with your life. And it's time for you to meet people who match your energetic energy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Definitely get that vibe that it's like uh, something you have to let go. Or maybe, you know, because I pulled this card, somebody new is coming in. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, somebody new could be coming in, or somebody you least suspect could be coming back, or something like that, you know. Last but not least, we have the car affiliated with the 12th house. The 12th house has to do with, like, uh, secrets, gifts, uh, psychic abilities, things of that nature, or whatever. Um, actually, with Judgment Car, I believe that has to do with Saturn, now that I think about it. There could be some kind of lesson that you learned in your Saturn return, or that Saturn is trying to teach you. Or Saturn may be affecting your career at this time. Okay, so somehow Saturn is affecting your career at this time. Okay. So with that being said, check the Saturn placement, which I believe now is in Aquarius, and then it has to do with uh, with the Aquarian energy. It generally has to do with like charity and um, not just charity, but like I want to say like shock and. Um, change so saturn could be causing a lot of changes in your career and stuff like that okay and then we have the tower card out here i'm not sure what the tower card is marked by i want to say that that tower card has to be like uh i can't think of what planet that would be honestly i guess that would be like uranus because it's like shock and change and stuff like I was just saying. So that Uranus energy could be coming through as well. So the Uran wherever Uranus is placed, I believe it's in Pisces right now. It has to do with, um, yeah, I do. I think it's in Pisces. It, Capricorn or Pisces here, okay? But the vibe that I get with that is like with that Uranus and uh, Aquarius energy. It has to do with, um, well, Uranus, Aquarius in the, uh, what is that, 11th house, before I get to the 12th house with your social circle and stuff like that. Um, it gives me the vibe that uh, there's there's going to be some drastic changes with your uh, circle, basically. There's going to be some, um, a lot, some stuff is going to shock you. I'm, that's what I'm just saying. I, be prepared to be shocked, Okay. Wow, okay, so that makes sense. Yeah, that's why that car surprise motherfucker came up. Yeah, okay, so there's some there's some changes and there's some things that's gonna shock you about your uh, social circle. Wow, you see how that line back up? You know, you got Uranus uh, affiliated with, uh, I wanna say the fifth house, I mean, whatever. You, you, you heard how I just said it up, whatever. <laughs> Either way, okay, so we got the 12th house here. With the 12th house energy here, you got the 10 of Pentacles in reverse here, so. The vibe that I get with that, with the Ten of Pentacles and stuff like that, it has to do with um, possibly somebody who will do anything or somebody who's abusing their gifts to try to get money, basically. This is somebody who's overdoing it in terms of trying to get money. They're trying to uh, maybe manifest it, do money work, money candle magic work, somebody who isn't apt for it, right? Your uh, spiritual journey may not even involve working with, uh, a, you know, the, like what someone is trying to work with here. Somebody's trying to work with something they're not uh, equipped to work with, okay? Like somebody could be trying to find their kind of magic or whatever, but the vibe I get is that, you know, with this ten of uh, earth here, somebody's trying to work with earth magic or do some kind of earth related magic and it's failing and it's costing them more than what it's gaining what they're gaining okay or they have to work extra hard to try to do some kind of earth magic to get it to work or some kind of earth ability or working with money some this has something to do with working with money somebody hands or somebody psychic gift has to do with like the taking of money okay it's like a spiritual thief is out here somebody you that's why you can't trust everybody and that ties into this uh house over here the eighth house here and other people's money 
Beware who you trust with your money at this time because it looks like somebody is a spiritual thief out here. And they could very well uh, con you into trusting them with their with your money. They may be trying to get you to trust them with your money. But in reality, it's like, mm, that's not the person for it. Uh, and... We got uh, Snake Eyes. Yeah, Snake Eyes. Is it Snake Eyes or Shadow Storm? I want to say that this is Snake Eyes here, right? So basically, the way that it goes is like Snake Eyes and Shadow Storm were both in the same clan. Snake Eyes was very jealous, okay? So somebody could be jealous of your, uh, your abilities, right? Or what gifts that you have. But either way, he was really jealous of... Uh, 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 I want to say the other one was Snake Eyes, but one of them is blind, I think. But either way, one of them, whatever. Shadow Storm, yeah, Shadow Storm and uh, Snake Eyes. Okay, so one of them was jealous of the other because the master picked them as like the favorite student and taught them special uh, techniques and stuff like that. And this in particular one, he thought, this guy here, he thought that he would inherit his master's dojo. He thought that the master was gonna pick him and all of that stuff. And come to find out the master was like, nah, you're not quite ready yet. Like I wasn't, you know, I didn't pick you because I didn't think you were ready. And he gets mad. And what he does is, you know, he joins the Cobra, okay? He joins uh, Cobra, right? So when he joins Cobra, he comes back and he plots his revenge by killing his master, right? And he turns some of the school, he, and the school gets turned into like a, what is that? The, uh, into like, like, basically he did, he got, he uh, got the school to turn into like, a, a, like foot soldiers for, um, for uh, Cobra, right? And that's when, uh, you know, Snake Eyes had to come out and, uh, you know, fight him or whatever. And yeah, it's pretty good. I don't know if you guys watch G.I. Joe's, but that's exactly where this guy's from, G.I. Joe's. Yeah, so this, this card deck that I got, I'm very satisfied with it. It got a little bit of everything. But essentially, getting back to the point, um, definitely there's somebody out here who's jealous who thought that they should uh, supersede you or that they deserve a certain... A higher level or ranking than you right but they are not as skilled as you because it's you who it comes natural for you whatever this is it's coming natural for you whatever the psychic gift is this ability this subconsciousness uh subconscious energy it's something that comes natural for you okay and this person doesn't like that. They don't like the fact that it comes natural to you like it does. They wish that they had what you had, basically. You know what I'm saying? And I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. Talking about, oh, well, that person wished that they had what you had. Yeah, well, this is the first time it really truly showed up in my card deck, okay? Um, other than that, uh, I'm still going to evaluate a few other ways to um, actually... I know the next way. I think I'm going to do an Archangel uh, pull in which I'm going to line up all the uh, angels and the Archangels um, insignias. And I'm going to place a card and see what they would want you to know. You see what I'm saying? And not only that, I mean, there's, there's other readings and stuff that I'm going to do. But I think I'm going to correlate it with the um, Archangels this time around. Or next time around see what messages that they have for you uh i was gonna do tree of life but the tree of life is so limited it's limited and the reason why it's limited is because you only have so much information about certain angels that are put up there like archangel zaphiel you have to resort to the internet to look look it up you know what i'm saying now even if you do call out and get you know to try to channel the information of what is what that that works no doubt but the thing is, is that sometimes you might channel the wrong thing, okay? That's the problem. You might channel the wrong thing and the wrong thing or person might respond. Got you thinking it's one thing when it's something else, you know? So that is all that I have here. Um, 
thank you all for uh, joining me today. Um, I ask that you all, you know, continue to keep your prayers up and um, definitely, um, you know, take it easy for the most part. Don't overdo it out here. Uh, it's a lot of people that's going to try you and challenge you. It's people that's been trying to challenge me too. So this is partly my story as well. Um, not fully, but it's partly my story. So some of this did resonate with me. Um, take what resonate with you. Uh, you know, hopefully it help you and give you some kind of clarity or insight to assist you. And um, that's all I got for tonight. Love y'all all. Take it easy. Peace.